What's going on people? So today I want to talk to you guys about how to strategically place your trades and I'm not talking about any type of technical analysis or anything like that. Um, I'm talking about all the options you guys get when you're trying to buy a stock. So there's market order, limit orders, there's stop market, stop limit, trailing stop market and trailing stop limit. So you guys can hear that all of those are either market orders or limit orders. So I'll explain what that is. And these are very important tools to help you guys get into the stock at the price you guys want and also out of your position with suffering minimal losses. Um, these options also allow you to be a little riskier um, because they force you to have an exit strategy, which is very helpful. And a lot of people see these options but don't really know what they mean. So hopefully by the end of this video, uh, you guys have a good understanding of this. So without further ado, Hey guys, my name is Guggen and I hope this video teaches you guys something and hopefully you guys can use it with your own investments as well because I use it every time I trade and I save so much money using these strategies. Um, so before we get into it, hit the subscribe button down below and if you're new and you see any value that I provided, um, definitely go hit the like button down below. But keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. Um, if you guys don't believe me, you guys can go check out all the other videos on YouTube. Don't just blindly um, trust what I say. Always do your own due diligence. Um, and again, keep in mind that these are my own opinions only when I'm talking about some stock information. But anyways, let's get started. So number one, market orders. This is the most common type of order and it's also the default option when you guys are buying stocks. As long as someone in the world is selling the stock, you will get it. But it doesn't mean that you'll get it at the price that you specified because you're not specifying anything, you are trying to buy it at the market price. So if the market price is $65 and you place your trade and right away the stock changes and it goes to 67, you'll get it at that 67 because you placed a market order. You'll get the stock at whatever it's trading at in the market. This is the simplest of the orders because this is when you don't really care about what the price is. You just want the stock. So you would place a market order to get it as soon as possible. So number two, limit orders. This is when you are buying or selling at a specific price. If you are buying, then you would set your limit price to the highest you're willing to pay. If you're selling, you would set your limit price to the lowest you're willing to accept. And this is great because you set the price in which you feel comfortable paying or selling. And if it gets filled, that's great. But you just either bought or sold exactly what you wanted. However, this is not guaranteed. So let's look at an example of CCIV. By the way, for those of you that watched my last video when I mentioned CCIV, it was trading at around $25 and now it's 53. So if we take a look at it, it was around here when I mentioned it. Um, and if you sold it at like its high point, that's a 130% gain. That's crazy. So hopefully um, some of you guys actually capitalized on that and realized that gain. Um, so congrats. And by the way, that 58 isn't even the uh, the high point is actually $65. So it's it's more than 130%. Um, so you guys just made a huge gain if you guys watched my video. Um, but anyways, that's not the point. So let's say you were putting a limit buy order in. And say you're only comfortable with paying around like $40 for this stock. So you would set your limit at $40. And if it falls below that $40, your limit order would get filled. However, if it always stays above that $40, you won't be able to buy it. The only way to buy it is increase your limit above what the market price is then. So the market order and limit order are the two most important that you guys need to understand because the next ones I'll be talking about involve either the market orders or limit orders. So moving on to number three, stop market. This is a type of order that limits the amount of money a trader can lose on a single trade. This is why it's so important for you guys that are making risky trades or anything like that, uh, that you guys aren't fully comfortable with, then you should know what the maximum amount of loss that you're willing to accept is. Um, so let's look at CCIV as an example again. A sell stop order will be placed below the current market level to prevent too much of a loss. So if CCIV is at $53 right now, and the merger with Lucid Motors does not happen, this stock can easily go down to like the 10, 12, $15 level, which is a huge loss if you guys bought it at the $53 level. So I can put my trigger price at say around like $40. If the stock goes down to that $40 price, then my order, my stop market order, will actually turn into a market sell order then. So my shares will be sold at the market price, but my order will only be turned into that 
when CCIV drops below the $40. So that's the sell side of it. So now let's look at the buy side. If I think that CCIV will be merging with Lucid Motors and I believe that um, if CCIV does merge, I let's just say hypothetically, I think this stock is going to $100, but I only wanna buy it if the merger goes through. So I would place my trigger price at around $70, let's say. So if it goes to $70, then my order turns into a market order and I would buy it at the market price, but it would only be activated if it hits that $70 price. But I just wanna clarify that if the stock is very volatile and the market is moving very quickly, then my order will be activated at $40, but if the closest buyer only wants it for 35, then that's the price I'll receive for the shares. But this still gets you out of your position without the further potential losses, because if this does fall down to that like $15 level, at least you got out at 35. So that's a stop market. Now you can also do a stop limit. The only difference is that instead of the order being activated at 40, but you only receiving 35, you can actually set the lowest limit you're willing to accept. So let's say you have your order activated at $40, but if the market is moving so quickly, uh, when your market order gets activated at $40, you don't want it to be executed at like 20, right? You want it to be executed just in that small little range. So you can set the lowest price you're willing to accept. Say for example, like $30. If it drops below that, you'll still be holding onto your shares. And this can be very helpful because if that price drops below your limit price, you'll still be holding onto the shares. So if you have the patience and confidence that the company will rebound and the stock price will go back up again, and that share price drop is nothing but like a market overreaction to something, and you actually see the true value, that's when it's worth using this stop market limit because you wanna minimize your losses, but if it drops way below what you're even willing to sell it for, then you hold on. Um, so you wanna know kind of what type of uh, drop you are expecting. Like if it's CCIV and it's not merging with Lucid, that's not a bad market reaction if it falls. Uh, because this price is only at 53 because everyone thinks it's going to be lucid that's merging with it. So now that we've talked about a market order, a limit order, a stop market order, a stop limit order, now we're going to talk about a trailing stop, either market or limit. But the difference is that it's trailing and that's something that I'll explain. So a trailing stop is designed to help protect your gains like all these other ones. But this trade remains open as long as the stock keeps moving in the direction that you want it to. So let's look at, for example, CCIV again. Let's look at when this stop drops. Let's look at how much it actually drops. So right here, it was about $32 and it dropped about 8%. And then it went back up to 34. And then again, it dropped about another 9%. And then it went back up again. And then it dropped again, another 8%. So we can see this does fluctuate a lot. Let's just say like around 10% is okay. So you would set a trailing stop, either a market or limit sell at about, let's say 15%. So if you bought this stock at $53 and it keeps on going up, you'll keep holding it. But as soon as that stock goes down by 15%, that's when my order will be activated and it'll either be sold at the market or the limit price that I choose. So this is really helpful because if you want to uh, put some money in a stock and not look at it for a long time and just kind of forget about it, um, then it's really easy to get out at the position or before it really falls down a lot lower. But you wanna make sure that you don't set your trailing stop too close to the actual stock price. Because let's say, for example, that I bought the stock at, let's just say like $15 and I set the trailing stop at 5%. So it keeps going up. I made that 25% or 40% right here. But then from here, as soon as it drops that 5%, like right here, I would have sold it because it's dropped 15%. So as soon as it dropped more than 5%, my order would be activated and it would be sold at the market or limit. But then if I sold it here, yes, I would have made like that 40% gain, but I could have missed, I would have missed out on this 175% gain, right? So you obviously want to capture that bigger gain instead. So you want to kind of look at what stock you are putting this on, if it's very volatile or not and how it moves. 
But if we look at something a little bit more stable, like the S&P 500 index, um, this doesn't usually drop more than like 10%. So by putting a 10% trailing stop on it, I would be able to take advantage of all the gains that are happening um, without getting out of the position too quickly. But say for example, I'm super scared of like a market recession or crash. Um, in those cases, yeah, the S&P 500 index would drop a little bit more than the 10%, but I would be able to get out just in time before it drops a lot further. And I just wanted to show you guys quickly how you guys can actually do this. So when you are trying to buy your shares or uh, your stock, you enter the symbol there and then you come down here and it always defaults to market. So here you can actually change it. You can set either limit, stop market, trailing stop, trailing stop limit, whatever you choose. Let's say trailing stop market. So now it asks us for the trigger delta. This is the uh, delta would just be the change. Um, and either we can choose a dollar amount or percentage by clicking on it. So if we do like a 10%, it'll tell us um, the estimated, oh, sorry, this is on buy. Let's look at sell. So it tells us what the estimated price is. So right now the price is at 52 and with the 10% trailing stop on it, we would be selling this at about 47. So as long as it stays above this 47, we'll hold on to it. But if it drops below that, we'll be getting rid of it. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys like this video. And again, if you found it helpful, please go hit the subscribe button and drop a comment or like down below. And like always, I'll see you guys next week.